Fire has broken out at a grain terminal in Azov port in Russia's southern Rostov region, Russian telegram channels reported on Monday. Smoke and flames are raging at the grain terminal in Azov city. According to local media reports, fire has also occurred in the port of Azov. The conveyor belt in the grain terminal has reportedly caught fire. The fire has been localized and no casualties have been reported yet. The port is located on the banks of the Don and Azovka rivers, a tributary of Don. This is the second such incident in Rostov region in the past weeks. On May 11, a fuel tank caught fire at the Kubro railway station in the Oryol district of the Rostov region. The fire was extinguished after the main directorate of the Ministry of Emergency Situations of Russia dispatched firefighters to the area. It should be recalled that a strong fire occurred in a grain warehouse in Rostov-on-Don city in the region on April 3. The fire that covered an area of 1,000 square meters was followed by several strong explosions. No casualties were reported during the incident and the reason of fire remains unknown. It should be noted that being the largest city in southern Russia, Rostov-on-Don sits about 100 kilometers from the eastern Ukraine border. U.S. can immediately change the situation in Kharkiv region by lifting the only ban. The United States of America is able to quickly change the situation in the Kharkov direction if it allows the Ukrainian army to fire American weapons into Russian territory. This opinion was expressed by George Barros, an analyst at the American Institute for the Study of War, when commenting on the White House ban. The Ukrainians cannot confront the Russians until they cross the international border, the Wall Street Journal quotes him as saying. According to the analyst, the United States is able to immediately change the battlefield in the Kharkov region if this ban is lifted. The current situation allows Moscow to transfer troops and weapons to the front much more effectively than in other regions where they have to disperse and camouflage positions behind the front line. In a recent interview, Volodymyr Zelensky said that the authorities have repeatedly asked American leader Joe Biden and other partner countries to give permission to use their weapons for such attacks. According to Western media reports, the White House is against this. The Pentagon says it has not changed its position on this issue. This week, a group of congressmen signed an appeal to Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin asking that Ukraine be given permission to strike Russian strategic targets under certain circumstances. Two weeks after Russian troops crossed the border to open a new front in the Kharkiv region, the offensive stopped in the town of Volchansk, less than 10 kilometers south of the border, and in Lipsy in the southwest. Military commander Alexander Sirsky announced this. The Kremlin's new front forced Kyiv to rush soldiers into the country's northeast, depleting reserves as Moscow stepped up its offensive in the east. Deep State, a mapping service maintained in collaboration with Ukraine's Ministry of Defense, has shown no significant advances by Kremlin forces as part of the Kharkiv offensive since Monday. Sirsky said that the Russian military command was sending reserves to support the local offensive, but to no avail. Fighting in the eastern region of Donetsk intensified as the Kremlin gained momentum, using its advantage over Ukrainian ammunition stockpiles and manpower. Moscow's forces have advanced near the strategically located town of Chasov Yar, which they are seeking to capture at any cost, Sirsky said. <laughs> Thank you.